Hello, hello. This is your host, Dmitry Senekov, and I'm excited to continue with this podcast after a couple of months break. And uh, if you haven't noticed, we have a little rebranding happening. This podcast started as a flow habit podcast because I have been speaking and coaching on the topic of flow and surrender for the past couple of years. And I am really sold on the idea that uh, we are not here to push control or force life to happen. Yet, over the last few months, what I've been coming up against is many of my clients sharing this message that, okay, okay, I feel like I've mastered this flow and surrender piece by why isn't anything happening? And what can I do to move things along? And this has been on top of my mind over the last few months. And as a result, um, both in my own experience and life journey, as well as working with others, I needed to recalibrate and understand what am I missing from the this puzzle piece of, are we here to simply flow and surrender with life? Are we here to simply experience it? And do we have any control, any say about what happens in their day-to-day experiences? Well, I'm glad to say that uh, I've got my clarity. I've got my understanding of how things are. And I would love to share some of these discoveries with you, what I've um, explored in my own practical experience. I, um, If you can recall, my intention here is to only share practical things that you can verify try on your own, implement in your own life. And I'm not as much interested about the philosophical, theoretical aspects of what does it mean to have a human experience, right? To me, if you cannot apply a piece of information that I share, then I'm not really being useful for you. It's much more of, you know, maybe entertainment or what I call psychological masturbation, just nothing more than entertainment, but uh, I tried to make it very practical. So as a result, so if flow habit was not the complete solution, then what is? And so over the last few months, what has connected for me was, uh, yes, flow and, and, and surrender are still the key pieces, but to me, they were missing a key ingredient, which was having a say in what we want to experience. And so as a result, the title of this episode is exactly that. What is the difference between personal development and this non-dual understanding of uh, life where there's nothing that we can control and that we're simply here flowing with uh, what is happening in a way to us, for us, um, that we're simply here to observe, right? And, And so I want to... Uh, split this into various details of where the benefit is of both of these uh, systems of thinking, so to say. They might be, you can call them consciousness levels, uh, where personal development is in a way something that is very empowering. It is most of the world is in this realm. You can see there's a bunch of books in personal development sections in um, bookstores and similarly this world of spirituality and especially non-duality aspects where uh, it's the world of oneness that we're here um, all together we're all one and how do these two worlds intersect so in my own experience i have spent quite a bit of time in personal development world where the main premise is that we're here to develop grow uh, prosper, thrive uh, as a personal um, individual uh, here to experience life. And that model of thinking has a lot of its benefits, right? It has taken us away from the consciousness of being a victim. And chances are, if you're listening to this, you have already been on this wonderful journey of personal development. You understand a lot of things about it that um, you are in a way in control of what is happening in your life, right? And and so we are in this constant 
uh, chase for growth and in a way uh, has a lot of benefits. Yet, at some point, personal development reaches a certain ceiling where we can no longer break through it through harder work, uh, more information gathering, uh, more reading, more doing, uh, because at some point, in order for things to shift, it has, uh, it, it no longer depends on us, right? So an example is whenever you're growing a business, at some point, whether the uh, Google search engine is going to pick up or drop your website from the first page of listings, whether the Instagram or Facebooks or TikToks are going to pick up your video that you're sharing, or whether customers are actually going to buy what you would love to sell to them, right? You may have the most wonderful uh, invention in the world, but if nobody's buying, it doesn't matter how much you work. Uh, things at some point get outside of your personal individual control. So that's where um, it is useful to now step into the world of spirituality, into the world of oneness, into the world of non-duality, where we have this understanding that it is no longer us individual separate self human being that is operating here in the world, but that we are part of, in a way, this one big machine that is uh, running according to some sort of intelligent mechanism. And I could compare it to that of a bee or ant colony, where you can see that you've got the the ant workers and the bee workers, you've got the warriors who are doing their job in order to benefit the collective. And it's interesting to observe if you ever have maybe seen on the Discovery Channel or one of those nature channels where um, these beings, if I can call them that, these creations, they don't go to school. They don't need education from their parents, they're somehow simply born and then they go and do their job, right? Somehow they know, the bees know that they need to collect the nectar from the flowers, the ants, they know they need to go, um, you know, discover the area. And so what is driving them? Well, in that perspective, now you're looking at this bigger uh, mechanism that is possibly functioning for all of those details right and and so if we bring it to our own personal experience at that point when you no longer are able to um, personally impact um, influence or control a certain outcome that you're expecting and, and that you're actually relying on somebody else to purchase your products to uh, maybe you know improve your health maybe some of those things that now you're relying on somebody else uh, it is very empowering to then look at the bigger picture of the world that maybe we're not just individual separate uh, little beings here flying through this huge rock in the space, but that we are part of this larger collective mechanism. And another kind of metaphor could be, you know, the little cells that we have in our bodies, like we have trillions of them. And so if one cell is not doing its job, then perhaps the entire body is not going to do uh, quite as well, as you can see with some of the health um, things that don't go according to how things are supposed to function. So in a way, then comes the question, so do you have a uh, separate willpower control, right? So this is the conversation about free will or not, and... <laughs> one of the cool quotes about it is that of course we have free will because we don't have other choice but to think that right so kind of in a, in a way is that free will or not uh, but here what i would love to say is that it's actually two different worlds and we can jump to these worlds at different times so an example 
the other example is um, we can look at our reality from two different perspectives. And that's how scientists view it. One is that we live in a physical reality, right? Where the smallest physical particle is that of an atom. Um, we have the laws of gravity, of electricity, uh, magnetism, etc. right? Or we can look at reality as it is not a physical uh, environment, that it is all energy and vibration, and that um, everything that we see around us is nothing more than a quality uh, of a certain energetic frequency. And you can speak to uh, the smarter people than me who are doing this for scientific research, that different laws and formulas would apply depending on which assumption you are coming from, whether our reality is physical or whether our reality is energetic. And it's not that one is more correct than the other. It is simply the fact that both of them are correct. And when we look at the reality that it is physical, certain laws apply. And when we look at reality that it is simply energetic frequency, um, different laws apply. Right? And this is where we go into the details of the quantum physics and quantum mechanics. And uh, similarly, this could be comparable to the world of personal development and the world of non-dual spiritual understanding of how life works. And then if it is not one is more correct than the other, then how do we apply them? And this is kind of where huge difference comes uh, in play where anything that has been pulling you back from experiencing your ultimate self from the personal development level, where an example could be the one premise of personal development world is that uh, where you are right now is not your highest potential, right? Because if you have already reached your highest potential, then that's it. The game is over. There's nowhere else to go there's nowhere to grow right so in order for a bigger potential to exist we need to assume that we are not there yet which right away is creating this idea that uh, compared to my future self where i am right now is not enough i don't have enough money i don't have enough uh, health, I don't have enough status, I don't have enough adventures, achievements, relationships, love, etc, 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 right? So the underlying promise of personal development is that you will be more enough at some point in the future. And that is creating this both a pressure, maybe an inspiration for some, that, okay, there is an answer to everything that I'm dealing with in the future. So therefore, I need to be spending my time, energy, and effort into developing this personal self. And that is always amazing. And this is what is creating the external progress that, um, you know, right now our computing powers are accelerating uh, faster than ever with the AI and everything that you can see uh, around us. Yet, this is having a huge impact on the internal experience, right? The more I succeed externally, the less I feel whole on the inside. Why? Because if I don't feel enough right now, and I think that achieving this particular goal at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, is going to make me happier. When I get to that goal, I may be able to celebrate maybe for a few minutes, maybe a few hours. It doesn't last more than a couple of weeks. And then we're off to the next goal. So this personal development world is a constant chase to this unknown future. At some point, I'll become better, happier, more fulfilled when something on the outside happens, right? And this is um, both a very good benefit of the personal development world where, yes, there is external progress, yet 
a very huge detriment to the internal experience of how we live our life. Okay, so these are kind of the, the pros and cons of the personal development world. Now let's take a look at the world of non-duality. In my own personal experience, right, I have had and continue to have uh, an experience, and there, I, I don't know if there's any other world to say it, that there is something that is watching and observing this world of Dimitri, that something is happening through him. Um, and at the same time, that it's not just him, but every character that I experience that this microphone that I'm speaking into and that you, the listener, perhaps, we are all this one mechanism that is having this experience, uh, having different points of view, like we can have multiple camera views looking at the same scene, right? So my camera view is this, and you have your own camera view, um, maybe looking at how life unfolds on the planet from the different side of it, right? I'm in Canada, you might be in a different country. Um, and we are kind of just the same mechanism. We're just watching things from, from a different angle. So from the angle of non-duality and, and the non-dual and spiritual understanding of oneness, then we are just one part of the whole. We're just a little ant that is um, a little cog in a machine. What's happening with that understanding is this beautiful, brilliant human mind of ours begins to think that there is no point in life. There is no meaning. There's It's all an illusion. So there's no point in external achievement. There's no, uh, there's a sense of giving up, so to say. And this is what I've experienced in my own uh, life. And I've also seen this happening in many other people where, okay, I have now reached this um, level of uh, beauty in life that none of this matters, that I can just feel uh, love all day long and I can stay in this love and light experience. And what happens then, in a way, we surrender, release any sense of, um, what's the word that I want? Any sense of maybe responsibility, maybe control, but maybe the word is initiative, right? So if I'm not here doing things and if things don't depend on me to have them happen, then I'm just going to let go, right? And of course, kind of in the deeper um, <laughs> sense, it's like there's there's no, nobody is making the decision. Nobody's uh, thinking all of this stuff. It's all happening for us and we're simply observing. So from that sense, when we're simply observing, what the human mind could do is that none of this matters. And I'm just going to flow and surrender. And I'm going to see how things are going to unfold, right? What happens then is a high chance of using that understanding of reality to escape the difficulties and challenges of the human experience. And I could name names of uh, very prominent spiritual teachers who I can see have uh, in a way jumped over their understanding of how to work with human emotion, how to uh, work with some of these experiences that are not as pleasant for us to, to have them in our bodies, right? And I'm talking about, and I'm doing the air quotes, negative emotions. So we're talking about Shame, blame, grief, sadness, anger, like all of this stuff. Uh, what could be called as uh, suffering, right? These are experiences that we don't want to have. And so what the spiritual non-dual understanding is showing us is that, well, all of this stuff that you feel is not really what you feel. This is not you feeling it and this is just happening. And, and so you can just escape into this 
lovely experience where there's just nothing but nirvana and and happiness. And what I want to share here is that there's a huge benefit in this spiritual understanding of life that anything that you have blamed yourself for, any guilt you have had, any shame about what happened in your past, this wonderful spiritual view of life that when you were born, it had nothing to do with you, as in you didn't choose your parents, you didn't choose the language, you didn't choose where you were born, you didn't choose into what kind of uh, family, into what kind of emotional environment, into what kind of financial environment you were born. That was none of you choosing. And as you were bringing, uh, as you were growing and as kind of your body was uh, learning how to function in this world, you can say that every behavior that happened since then, every thought and every emotion that you have had was none of your doing. Because did you choose the language that you speak? Probably not. Having this understanding is allowing people to have this huge sense of relief. It's like, oh my God, there's nothing wrong with me. This happened because it needed to happen for whatever reason. And right, so here, in comparison with the personal development world, this spiritual non-dual understanding, which is not a theoretical thing, but really it's a practical um, application of it that did you... Or did you not, you know, choose some of the early childhood experiences? Uh, the things that you said, the things that you did, they were simply, at that point in time, a summary of conditioned programming that your mind has absorbed up till that point, right? Even right now, you could apply the same logic. The things that you think the things that you do or don't do, the procrastinations or the performance, the internal pressures that you apply for yourself or the successes that you've had, they have been nothing more than the summary of the condition programming that you've experienced up to this point, right? So this understanding of, of non-duality is that what is happening, what has happened for you so far was none of you doing, right? So this is adding an element of self-compassion, self-love, self-acceptance, that there's nothing wrong with you, that there's nothing for you to fix in who you are that is present in the personal development world. Adding this spiritual understanding helps deal with all of that, right? Now, if we only look at the world that everything is frequency and there's no time and space and all of this is an illusion, then what the heck is the point? Then why are we here and what, what are you going to do next with your day? Well, this is where we now need to combine the two worlds of spiritual sort of non-duality and in a way this personal development where, yes, you are a freaking oneness being observing this human experience as it's happening on the planet, both through you and through other people. And at the same time, you have a brain that is functioning like a machine that is constantly absorbing, absorbing things and that the thoughts that it has are nothing more than the previous programming that it received. Right? Similarly, kind of, we can, we can go into like the, what's the thought and what's an intuitive download, so to say. But we get to combine it to worlds. And in a way, it's like it's two different hats that we get to wear at different moments in time when they become more useful, more practical for a particular challenge that we're dealing with, right? And this is where um, it's not like it's the difference between personal development and, and the spiritual non-dual understanding of things. But when is a good time to apply, to apply either one of them? Because... You know, if, if from the spiritual understanding, uh, there is nothing that we can do that life just happens to us and we simply watch how we do and, and how we not do. Well, kind of makes sense yet. 
if there's a hard thing that you're supposed to do, chances are you will keep on delaying until a time that, you know, a decision happens that you're going to do it. But if we look at it now from the level of personality that you are this human body, human mind, and you take responsibility for the reality that is happening around you, then we can use the spiritual non-dual understanding in order to let go of that guilt and the shame and all of this negative experiences of how we view ourselves, that really what is happening to us, what has happened in our life was nothing more than a little uh, movie discovery journey that we needed to experience for the weird <laughs> fun of it, whoever enjoyed all of these struggles and challenges and I'm sure I'm speaking to pretty much 100% of whoever's listening to this of having had some kind of suffering and challenges in the world, whether external or internal, right? So we apply this spiritual non-dual understanding in order to allow the past to be the way it is. And kind of this is the stuff that we talk in our um, membership calls. We have this weekly portal that uh, you can come in both bring in some of your challenges you're experiencing internally or externally, and also listen into what other people are dealing with. And chances are sometimes listening to other people, the way they ask a question and the way they formulate their experience, what I hear people have is, wow, I, I've always been feeling it, but I couldn't put it into words. And so that's why kind of the, the group dynamic that we have is, is very helpful to see uh, along with to help your mind understand that whatever you're going through, you're not alone. Right? What the mind loves to do is that I am uh, all on my own. The struggles that I have, nobody else is struggling with. And this is creating further separation and loneliness that we feel. But when in fact, when we kind of open up and we see other people open up to all of this stuff, we see that we're actually everybody's going through pretty much similar situations. Yeah, they some may be worse, some maybe different. Um, but that way we're able to at least share in the experience of the other and develop the sense of compassion. It's like what I'm going through, what they're going through. We're simply here to share it all with each other. Anyway, a little tangent. Um, you can kind of explore more if you'd like to join this uh, membership that I'm calling Powerful Creator Experience. It's a private membership club and you can find it on powerfulcreator.com slash rise. And as we come back to the topic of the spiritual understanding of life, how it is helpful to see in order to get through the guilt, shame, and blame of what happened in the past, of taking myself of this inner critic who is constantly saying, what the heck is wrong with you? Why are you saying this? Why are you behaving this way? Why did you do that? Why can't you get yourself in order? Why aren't you, you know, getting up at six in the morning to go work out like you've been promising for the last 10 years? All of this beating up that we do, having the spiritual understanding and being able to bring it into that regard that nothing is wrong that is happening. This was the way your machine was designed, was programmed and conditioned. It's okay. And that kind of creates a little sense of peace. And um, how I see it is, is the lifting off the weight of the responsibility for what I think, how I feel, how I behave. And it's very important to have that type of experience, that type of view of yourself in the world, especially if you're heavy into the personal development world. Right? Yet, if we just think that, well, you know, things are happening and I have no control about anything, this is where we come back into a way, this um, world of personal development, so to say. But it's a, it's a, a, on a much different, much higher level where it's no longer it's personal development, but I call it taking responsibility. And now it's taking responsibility, not taking control, but taking responsibility of what is happening in my external reality. And it is also taking responsibility for how that external reality is making me feel. Similarly, of all of the different possibilities that I have to act or to not act, 
and taking responsibility to make the decisions that are necessary that may involve a, a less pleasant experience right now, right? To go through the fear, shame, guilt, blame, to have the difficult conversation, to go uh, wake up at six o'clock in the morning, first time to the gym when it's the most difficult thing and you don't have the neural pathways yet developed for that habitual and behavior just yet. This is when the taking responsibility comes in because in a way, what is happening around us, it has nothing to do with this mind and this body, right? So you may have had a goal or a dream to go on vacation, to make this much money, to create this company, to have this relationship. And because some of the th these things are outside of your personal level of control, they haven't happened to you yet. And it's important at that point not to beat yourself up, right? From personal development aspect that there's something wrong with me that these things are not happening. No, at that point, we look at the sort of flow and surrender aspect that everything is happening in life for a particular reason. In a way, this is sort of the bigger you, the higher self that is creating all of this stuff and taking responsibility for it as not trying to force and control all of this stuff, but to actually go look inside and go deep inside. Why is this reality the way it is right now? What is it trying to show to me about me? So an example is uh, other people are not hearing what I say, right? I'm trying to set the boundaries, but they're not uh, uh, accepting the boundaries that I try to set. Right. And in that way, it's like, yes, we can't control the people. And at that point, we could drop down to the level of victimhood. It's like, I'm trying to set my boundaries, but I need these people to pay my bills and they're not listening. And so I have to be the one who is kind of the victim in the situation. Like I feel closed off and jailed in this situation, in the circumstance, I can't do anything about it. And so I'm going to, you know, not, not try anything. Or instead we could try even harder and, and try to set them in stronger boundaries and go and fight and, and all of this stuff. Taking responsibility in that situation means what part of me, honestly, is creating the situation right now? And what is it reflecting about me? And in a way that here, the work of Byron Katie and all other wonderful psychological um, ways to inquire into our thought processes are able to bring us back to what is it in me that is creating the current situation right now? Where am I not loving myself? Where am I beating myself up? Where am I not holding my own boundaries? Where am I not uh, listening to myself? Or what's most importantly happening with high achievers, what I see is in a way, where's my inner feminine? Where's my inner child that wants to play, wants to be free, wants to have fun. And yet this overdeveloped left brain inner masculine that has grown a strong muscle of self-discipline, of control, of being able to um, always be on point on the go and have a strong relationship with my word, et cetera, et cetera, right? So when we, a part of us that is solely focused on achievement and result uh, getting orientation, that part is going to dismiss the other parts of us that want to play, have fun, not have a morning schedule that I have to always follow. I want to have some freedom, right? When, when these two parts are not in agreement, we are going to have occurrences of self-sabotage happening because these two parts are not communicating together. And at that point, this is what I'm referring to as taking responsibility. Where am I not allowing my other parts to be the way they want to be? 
right now this is not just flow surrender well, let's see how the world is going to go which is a wonderful place to be yet where is the harsh honest truth where i still need something from somebody where i am still blocking myself from allowing some part of me to have its own biggest dreams fulfilled and the funny thing for the inner child the biggest dream could be nothing more than going out and grabbing an ice cream doing some of these silly things going dancing in the rain and um it sounds very silly but this is the kind of stuff that comes up in our conversations when we allow the overdeveloped left brain for high achievers when we let go of control when we have spent already time and flow and surrender we when we sort of got into the balance a little bit that life is not always going to go my way and that it's okay and that there's nothing to stress about that you can actually be more responsible to the external things that are happening when you're not stressing or anxious about it, when you're not trying to control it yet at the same time when we go into this self understanding self inquiry taking responsibility for where are we not caring for ourselves where am i doing stuff that i think i should be where my brain is taking over the things that would actually light me up that makes no sense make no sense right now where i want to do something that is not going to ma- bring in money i want to do something that may jeopardize a certain relationship but i feel like doing it where are we not allowing ourselves to do all of this stuff all right this is where i see the interconnection between this world of non-duality where it's all about flow and surrender and yeah we simply get to wait yet in that wait what we can do is look inside and take responsibility what inside of me what relationship with any of my parts that i have that are creating the current reality and this is the game that i'll have to play with people to see what is the reality shown to me right now both what is the reality what are other people reflecting back to me what are my emotions how i feel are reflecting back to me and then we get to explore together and this is the very exciting time to be alive right now where we have these powerful creators waking up to be able to wake up from the unconscious creation of being sort of a victim and being a in a way controller or perceived controller of the way life is while i'm being in stress resistance and anticipation all of the time to waking up to seeing that well actually everything is reflecting to me my inner world how i see myself how i see the world and when we build the muscle to start creating the reality from the inside out and when we get the first glimpses first confirmations that this is how the reality actually works that it's not about the working hard but it's about how much you love doing the work that you do i love seeing when people have these first experiences when it's no longer theoretical when it becomes to be practical and this is my intention for you is that as you are continuing to listen to this conversation as you're continuing to dive in further into your own personal mastery as you're both exploring the spiritual and the self-development aspects of the creation that we live in today this is what i wish for you to remember the powerful creator that you are. Till we speak next time. Have a great day.